In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to use my Pin Pals Enamel Badge Creator to create an authentic looking melon badge in Affinity Designer. Now the first thing I'm going to do is create the outlines of my badge, and those are the, the metallic sort of edges. And so to start with, I'm going to use the ellipse tool and I'm just going to create a fairly large circle here. I'm going to reduce the stroke just a little bit. And I'm going to convert the circle to curves. And then I'm going to use the node tool to select these two nodes. And I'm going to split the shape into two by using the break curve button, like so. And I'm going to delete the top semicircle so that I have just one semicircle. And I'm going to use the add button to create a complete shape there. The next step is to copy and paste the semicircle. So edit copy and edit paste. And then I'm going to use the contour tool to create a, a larger version of that shape. Now it's important that I click on the mitre contour type here um, as this will create straight corners. So all I do is click and drag like so and I have the second part of my melon. Now I'm just going to convert this new shape to curves like so. And then I'm going to use the node tool to remove these top two nodes. So I'm just pressing the delete button there. You can see it's already starting to look a bit like a melon. And now I'm going to repeat the process to create another semicircle. So I'm copying the semicircle and pasting it. And I'll move that down to the bottom of the stacking order. Then I'm choosing the contour tool, selecting mitre here, and simply creating another shape like so. And I'm going to bake the appearance, use the node tool to again remove those two nodes. The next thing I'm going to do is select all three of my semicircles here, and I'm going to expand the stroke so that all of these are fills. And to do this, I get a layer and expand stroke. And as you can see, these are all now fills. Obviously we've got three overlapping shapes, so I'm gonna combine them by using the add button here. Now I think I'd like rounded corners, so I'm gonna select these nodes here. I'm going to use the corner tool. I'm just going to add very subtle rounded corners there. The next step is to cut a bite mark out of the shape. And again, we're going to use the ellipse tool and I'm holding down the shift key so my ellipse is nice and regular. And now I'm holding down the alt key and I'm dragging the ellipse and that's duplicated it there. So we now have two and I'm going to do that again and again. Now I'd like to align the outer two. So I'm going to select them both and I'm going to align them vertically like so. And I'll do the same for the middle two circles as well. And I'm going to select all four of the circles and I'm going to space them horizontally so they're nicely evenly spaced. And now I'm going to combine these shapes and I'm going to select the bite marks and the existing curve here. And I'm just going to align them centrally like so. Then I'm just going to reposition those, I think I'll shrink them down just a little bit. And now I'm going to have to realign them, like so. I'm now going to convert the bite mark shape 
to a fill shape. Again, I'm going to layer and expand stroke like so. And now we want to delete sections of the bite mark and of the melon itself. So what I'm going to do is first create another shape above the melon shape. And I'm simply going to select both the square shape and the melon shape and I'm using the subtract function like so and we're going to repeat the process actually before I do that it's worth having snapping on um, you'll see why when I create the shape we want it to butt up exactly against the melon shape here which snapping will allow me to do so I'm moving that above the bite shape in stacking order and I'm selecting the rectangle, holding down the shift key and selecting the bite and simply clicking the subtract button there. Then I'm going to delete this rogue shape here and then I'm going to select the bite mark and the melon and you guessed it, clicking the add button. And there you have the bulk of your outline. The next step is to create some fill shapes here, here and here. And we're going to do this by duplicating the existing set of curves. So I'm going back to edit copy and edit paste. And we're going to name the top set outlines and the bottom set fill shapes and we're going to knock out the outline shape and then we're simply going to delete the outer nodes leaving us with fill shapes like so Now at the moment this is a compound path which means all the shapes are joined together as you can see from the layers tab here. So we're going to create three different versions of this by copying and pasting and we'll knock out the top two and then we'll just delete the nodes we don't need again. Now I've just coloured those in different colours so that you can make sense of it. And the next step is to make the melon pips. So to create the pips, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to select the pen tool and I'm clicking once and I'm holding down shift, which means I create my second node directly vertically like so. Then I'm going to go up to my stroke options and I'm going to make sure I click round cap like so. And I'm going to go down to pressure and I'm simply going to do that so that we end up with a triangle. Now see what happens when I expand the stroke. So again, I'm going to layer and expand stroke. The curve comes back in. So that's almost like a pit. I'm just going to select these two nodes here and I'm going to convert to smart like so. Then I'm just going to move that down a little bit and then add a slightly curved end there and we'll just convert to curves there. And so you have a pip. I'm just going to quickly duplicate these and position them.
And now the pips are done, I'm going to select them all and turn them into a compound shape by using the add button here. And then I'm going to copy those and I'm going to paste them directly above again. I'm going to knock out the upper version and I'm going to move the lower version above this fill shape here. And I'm going to select both of them. And then I'm going to use the subtract button to knock them out. And as you can see, it's completely transparent now. I'll just turn on the other pips. And that's all the shapes done. And next is the fun bit. We're going to apply a couple of the styles. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to move the outlines to the top of the image. And with it selected, I'm simply going to click on one of the styles here. And you can see it's instantly applied. And it's worth noting at this stage that any texture um, that's included in the style will be reproportioned as per the shape to which you're applying it to. All of my textures in this product are square, so we need square proportions. So, and to sort that out, you simply select the fill tool here, and these arms that appear represent the proportions of the texture. As you can see, one is longer than the other, and we simply double click on one of the ends and that reproportions the texture. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit, so it's a bit large in this case, like so. Now I'm just going to add the other styles. So I'm going to load up the fill styles here, and I've got this shape selected, and I'm simply clicking like so. Now I'm going to correct the proportion of the texture, and I think I'll shrink it a little bit, like so. And now the styles will vary slightly depending on the size of the shape you're applying them to. Um, and if you want to adjust them, because I think this looks a little large, simply double click this effects icon here, and you can see all the effects involved are ticked on this menu here. And so I'm going to reduce the size of the bevel and emboss a little bit. And I'm going to make it slightly less soft. And as you can see, that's far more prominent. I think a large improvement. I'm now going to repeat that process with these two shapes here. Now it's time for me to select the pips and add another style to them. So I'm going to reload the outline styles. And then I'm going to try these three black ones here. I'm also going to highlight the that there are three different versions of each style. So there's the flat version, the rounded version, or the sharp version. I think I'm going to try the rounded version. But I'm just going to make it a little flatter by adjusting the effects here. One final thing I'd like to do is to add a larger drop shadow um, in the background. And what I do to create this is I'm going to duplicate the entire image. So I'm going to copy and then 
paste it. Then quickly just going to put it all on the same layer and merge it into one shape like so. Then we can delete that extra layer there. We're just going to knock out these other effects. And now we're going to add our outer shadow. And there you have the finished melon design. Just before I finish the tutorial, I just wanted to address a question um, that a customer asked me recently. And that is, how do I apply this style to text? And the answer is, it's exactly the same process as applying it to an image. So I'll give you an example here. I have these four type letters here. And I'm just going to click on a style. And as you can see, applied instantly. Now I'm just going to upscale the effects a little bit. So I'm just going to enlarge the radius of the 3D here. So that looks a little bit better. As you can see, it's that easy. Be sure to check out the pack on artifactsforge.com and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.